All right, go ahead and log back in if you are still logged out. It's a login link there. Let's head over to People and let's look at Roles. The user workflow is Roles, Permissions, Add User, and Test. By default, we have three roles, Anonymous, Authenticated, and Administrator. Let's add a role called Editor and click Save. I like to drag my roles into the order of permissions. It doesn't do anything. It just gives me a visual cue. Go ahead and on the Editor role, click Edit Permissions. And this is going to allow us to see just the permissions for the editor. So our editors are going to only be allowed to do a few things. We've allowed commenting on certain sections of our site, so we'll allow them to administer comments, post comments, and skip comment approval and view comments. This way our editors don't need to wait for an administrator to approve their comments. We'll also allow them to edit their own comments just in case they need to do that. We're not going to allow them to administer contact forms. We're not going to allow them to do any kind of management of our layouts. We're not going to allow them to administer content types, but we are going to allow them to administer content. We'll allow them to view published content, create articles, edit articles, and even edit revisions. We trust this editor. Basic pages. And hotels. So essentially, this editor is a very, very trusted role on our website. We're not going to allow them to change up scheduler, searches, shortcuts, administer any of the system settings. We're not going to allow them to delete taxonomy terms in landmarks. Again, we'll leave that at the administrator or a higher level. We'll let them use the administration toolbar, which is cool because it'll only show them the things that they have access to. And we'll save permissions. The last step, of course, is to add an editor. And in this case, it's probably just as easy to go ahead and promote a user. Go ahead and click on one of the users that Devel generated. Click Edit. And go ahead and make them an editor. And select a value for their interests because, again, every registered user on your site needs to fill in any required fields. And now Swim Ed Ripa. <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. Let's change his username to editor. That'll just make it a little bit easier. Click Save. All right. So the editor has a username. Ideally, we should test the permissions we just used. And fortunately, there's a module for that. It's called Masquerade. Head over to drupal.org slash project slash masquerade. Go ahead and install the Drupal 8 version. Once again, these numbers will change by the time you take this class. Copy the link. Go ahead and install that new module. Enable it. And install. What this does is it allows you to do exactly what it sounds like masquerade as a user. The problem is, of course, if we reset their password so we can log in and test, that's probably going to upset them a little bit. And we can't look up their password. All right, head over to People. Find your editor that we just edited a little bit ago. Hover over the Edit. Click on the down triangle and click Masquerade As. 
And now you're masquerading as the editor. You'll notice that you can edit a hotel and you can add shortcuts. If I click add content, you notice that I have access to all of the content types. If I head over to the landmarks taxonomy page, you'll notice I can't edit my landmarks. And this is exactly what we set up. So this is good news. My settings seem to be working just fine. If I go to my basic page, click all about Sydney, you'll see that I can edit the administrator's node even though I didn't create it. So it seems to be working. I can click on masquerade and now I'm back to being the administrator. So the people workflow, roles, permissions, add users, and test.